that man used to insult me so much that he cannot marry somebody who is ugly like me. And then he wasn't working, so he would uh, ask me to, you know, to give him money for food. I would buy money for food. I would give him bus fare. But then he would go bragging that, oh, Sarah loves me so much. In fact, she bribes me with money to marry her. I am right behind him. And then he turns back and sees me. And the guy looks at me and he goes like, I was like, why is this man gazing with his mouth open? He said, oh my God. I've never seen such a beautiful woman like you. <laughs> and I said to myself, beautiful. And you know what I was told there. So I got there and I got the number. I said, hey, this is so and so. Can you advise me on where to get these spare parts? Bra, 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 bra. And then he asked me, uh, how is it going with your fiancé? He said, oh, I don't know what to say. He said, he said what? He said, you know what? It didn't work. He said, oh, it didn't work. He acted like, oh, he's so sympathizing sorry. with me. Oh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> he was like, yes, yes, yes. <laughs> he's, he's I t I'm told that, oh, somebody is calling you in the break room. I go there. He's there with food, with balloons, with flowers. And I'm like, oh, and then I sit down there. He's talking to me and feeding me. Oh, the others were insulting me. <laughs> that was the first time I heard somebody call a woman babe. What do you tell people who are seeking for a chance in love, people who are still waiting for someone to love them the way Greg loves you? If somebody doesn't care about your feelings, whether they hurt you or not, they don't deserve you. A very good morning to you and a warm welcome to LNS Rebuilding Series. My name is Lynn Gungi. Sijui mnakulia skuku wapi, but guys, I just wanted to let you know even before I go any further, this has been an incredible year. You guys have done it for us and I'm so, so, so grateful. But then again, I look at my guest today and I wonder, where do we even get the guts to tell someone that, you know, she's ugly or you tell people that, you know, I, I can't even, ma like there are so many things you tell people and I've always said words have power but for me the rebuilding part for her is being able to find a man that appreciates her beauty. I asked her how is your husband and she said Lynn he's a good man he's a good man when I hear that I want it for every one of us I want us to be able to experience love that knows no color love that you know elevates you love that makes you want to become a better person on. And I'm telling you, her story is not only that of marriage. It's that one that will make you say, I manifested to be this person. And now she's living the life of her dream because she manifested it. But it has not come without challenges. And for me, I'm really interested in knowing how was she able to navigate, you know, through life huh, to where she is right now. She's about to inspire all of you. But before that, guys, you know, I have got to pay a couple of bills here so I want to say thank you so much to our partners at Optiven for always coming through. They are celebrating their 24 years in real estate and for me every time I see them win it's a beautiful thing because I keep telling you Optiven is not selling you land. It's a lifestyle. It's selling you something that you will enjoy for the rest of your life without issues. No one will come and say this land is mine. They do very beautiful due diligence. I've worked with them for three years. No complaint whatsoever. And if you have one, my email is right here. You can send it to me. But today their product of choice and the product they want me to talk to you about uh, is their Ocean View range. Hey, range. I must it your Jesus. Muga, ulikula kuku. And me, the property they want me to talk to you about, it's their Ocean View Ridge in Vipingo. If you are looking for a retirement home, why don't you give it a chance, guys? Their, con guys, their contact details are right here on the screen. And also to say thank you so much, guys, once again, for being incredible supporters of our work. Road to 800K, subscription is free. So if you are watching this without having subscribed, 
please do so and to thank my incredible team Muga Wakuku and of course Sam and Mary for always coming through compiling this episode and making sure it reaches you guys it reaches you guys right on time and now without further ado please allow me to let my beautiful guest introduce herself Sarah how are you I'm fine thank you it's Muga it's not me <laughs> It's Muga, it's not me. How are you? I'm fine, thank you. You look amazing. Thank you. You Lynn. are so, 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 so beautiful. Thank you, I'm humbled. You are so beautiful. Thank but you. before we go any further, mm -hmm. please introduce yourself. Thank you so much, mm -hmm. Lynn. My name is Sarah Irara Dryden. Yeah. Um, I am a Kenyan. I am a pastor. I am a gospel recording minister. Yes. For the last 28 years. Wow. And I am a nurse. Yeah. And I visited Kenya and I said, I have to look for you because I like what you do. Thank you. You inspire us a lot through the stories. Thank you. And so, so I'm here to share my story. Yeah. And I know that I'm going to encourage somebody. Mm -hmm. Yes. First, when people tell you you're beautiful, mm -hmm. do you believe that? Now I believe. I believe mm -hmm. uh, well, there was a time I thought I wasn't looking good because of, you know, like that pastor who left me and nearly hurt me mm -hmm. and he kept on bragging that he can't marry such an ugly woman like me. Yeah. And then, because you know, I got the height <laughs> and they are in the village, they used to see you because you are tall, they give you names. There was a name they used to call the tall people. Uh, which wasn't beautiful, mm. but when I went there and I was taking care of clients and somebody would just look at me and tell me, oh my God, you are so beautiful. Yes. I wish I was tall like you. <laughs> now I was, I started appreciating mm. myself mm. and I started loving myself mm. and I started even wearing more high heels. Now I want to look even taller. Yes. So I believe I'm fear free and wonder free made. Yes. And I'm grateful to God and nobody is going to talk me down or tell, tell me that I don't look good. I am fear free and, and wonderfully wonderful made. made. And I want to affirm that to you are the most gorgeous woman I've ever seen. Amen. You are so beautiful. Thank I you. mean, not even your, your features, but even your energy. You exude beautiful energy. Amen. And you're just so natural, you know, and it's so easy to have a conversation with you. Thank so you. thank you for even allowing us, all our audience, please just comment there and say, Sarah, you are beautiful. Because those words, what was told to you, mm -hmm. what was said to you, I'm happy you've been able to come out of that space of no, mm -hmm. I'm not that. Yeah. I am fearfully and wonderfully made. made. Are we together? Yes, we are. We are. Toge yes, we are. Good. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> All right, let's start our conversation. And thank you also for making time to stop by thank our you. studio. I don't take it for granted. You're but welcome. the theme of our conversation mm -hmm. is dubbed rebuilding. Mm -hmm. What are you rebuilding or building in your life right now? Uh, right now, um, I would say I'm rebuilding my career. Yes. I'm rebuilding my life. I'm rebuilding my spirit and I just want to say that it's not easy. I did not just find myself where I am. Yeah. Uh, first of all, uh, let me say that I'm born in a family of eight. I'm the second born mm -hmm. and uh, I grew up in the village, a place called um, Kenton Gateway. It is near Flyover, mm -hmm. right down at the escarpment there where you have to cry a hill like you. <laughs> Your legs are, you know, it's so steep yes. coming from there. And um, that's where my family lives, though we originally come from Deya, Rimul. Mm -hmm. I was born in Nairobi, Randimawe, so my dad bought a land there, so we moved there. So I went to Kuriko Primary School, and then <laughs> I was supposed to go to your school, Magumu. <laughs> <laughs> but I said no. No way. I told, yeah, I said I said no. I wouldn't go there because yeah. I was scared. I um, one of my neighbors went to a boarding school yes. that is mixed and came back with twins. I said, oh, I don't want to go there. And then 
<laughs> these boys will will make my mind go crazy yes. and I come back with twins with a, twins instead of coming back with a certificate. <laughs> <laughs> so so I told my dad to get me a girls school. So I went to Jabini Girls High School. Oh, so when goodness. you talk about cold you I know, got, I got it good. Girl, oh yeah, you I know, got cold. It. Oh yes, Amagumu was such a nice school. Yeah, I know. Is, yeah. yeah, but we 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 did not come out with twins. We didn't <laughs> want. <laughs> <laughs> but my boyfriend was fly. Oh. I had an amazing boyfriend in house. Oh, I didn't have any. <laughs> I was man solo. <laughs> <laughs> so you didn't have any? I didn't have any. <laughs> yeah, I was man solo <laughs> and I stayed man solo for quite some time. Okay. Anyway, I, I, I completed high school in 1991. Yeah. Then I went back home. Uh, in 1992, there was registration of voters. Mm -hmm. So I got a job there for some time, a seasonal job. So I made good money mm -hmm. having come from you know high school. Yes. And then after that, I was employed by um, Honorable Kabogo's mm -hmm. mom. Mm -hmm. She had a, a small restaurant in yeah. Roiro, opposite Roiro High School. Yes. So I worked for some time. And then after that, I left. So I started working as a house help, which I did for almost four years. I would say most of it, I, I think I was only paid for one month. Mm. I wasn't getting any pay. Yeah. And the last one I worked for, I worked for like a month and then I left. Uh, the, the lady was very cruel. She wasn't kind to me and um, she didn't treat me good. But what really, really brought me down is where, okay, my, I had a servant mm. quarter, but then my bathroom was, uh, was also my, it was my bathroom, it was my shower room, and that's where she put her chicken. So that's where they, oh. so I was invested by Jigas, and I didn't know because I've never had, you know, Jigas the whole of my life. So I was itching. And it was sweet, it was hot, it was itchy. I didn't know what it was mm. until when I went home yeah. and I said, I'm itching so much. And my sister checked me and I tell you what, I had a lot of jiggers. And the woman was literally making me wash her bathroom. With, you know that Scotch bright, the green one, without gloves. That's what I used to use to clean her toilet, without gloves. And she would tell me, the toilet is as clean as you make it. But I could not use hers. I had mine outside. So that was hers. And I don't think that was really appropriate. Of course it was. It wasn't appropriate. So when I left there, uh, at least I had something to go home. Yes. I went back home to see my family because I was away for more than three years. And there were no cell phones. They didn't know how I was, I was doing. And because this one at least paid me, I went to see my parents. Mm. So on my way to go see my parents, I passed by Mr. Camaro, Joseph Camaro, you know him? Yes. I passed by there. I was introduced by a friend who came to our church. She came, she came from Mombasa. Mm. Her name was Annabel mm -hmm. Karioki. So she introduced me to Mr. Camaro. And when she introduced me, she said, uh, this is a, a, a good girl. I have gone to her church. Yes. She sings good and she's a good interpreter. So on my way home, I, I stepped by, I stopped by and we talked and he told me, when you come back from home, please come back here and see me. I thought he's going to help mm. me record my music yes. because I, I already had my own music. Um, so when I came back, Believe it or not, he looked at me and said, I don't know you, but for some reason, I just like you. I just love you. Let me give you a job and see how you're going to do it. Wow. So he hired me to be a dubbing machine operator. That time we used to sell cassettes. So my, my work was to duplicate those cassettes. And I was like his PA yes. taking care of his store mm -hmm. and and the money that we mm -hmm. used to sell cassettes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I worked there for some time. And then here comes a, a, a lady who had lost her mother. And she used to come, she wanted to sing. 
and uh, because I was working a lot, those times sales were very high, so I was working a lot of overtime. And I told Mr. Kamaro, can we hire this lady mm -hmm. so that we can help her out? Instead of me doing all the overtime, uh, you can give her some hours. Mm. Little, little did I know that that would be the end of me working for Mr. Kamaro. Oh. Yeah, that girl who I stayed with in my house for more than one year, you know, supporting her, giving her food, paying rent, everything. But when I got her hired, a month did not end. She, she did. She did set me up. And it ca uh, the way she set me up, uh, I don't know, because I was told that I, I gave out a cassette to go make copies for piracy. And by then I had, I had already uh, mm -hmm. recorded my own music mm -hmm. through another producer, that's another story. Mm -hmm. So that's what happened and I ended up in Central Police Station. Um, I was very sick with typhoid and those times we used to get a lot of meds, like those uh, um, capsules. I had two packets and that's the, the only time in the whole of my life that I contemplated suicide. So I wanted to take mm -hmm. all the medication. Mm -hmm. I felt so bad because people were talking bad about me. And then I couldn't believe that uh, Muse Kamaru could not trust me. And I used to take care of a lot of his money. I felt betrayed, but I did not know that the lady set me up. And then I imagine that day I came to work late. It was at around 11, mm -hmm. having come from, hos uh, from hospital. And then the way you, ca you access me, you cannot access me direct. Nobody was around to my office. Mm -hmm. You have to talk through a small hole. You go through the cashier and then you go to the accountant and then uh, the accountant will talk to me. Nobody was allowed to go in there. So I was wondering, how did I give out a cassette? Anyway, if I wanted to give one, why not put it in my purse? Yes. You know, nobody is watching me. Anyway. Yeah, I prayed there like crazy <laughs> because I was saying my final prayers before I meet God. <laughs> God is good. Yeah, and then when I was there praying, I was I looked funny. My hair wasn't kept. It, it was it was bad because I didn't know that I'm gonna end up in the cell. So the night before, I had a wig, a weave. So I removed all my weave. If you you know what you know. Yes. And I had those old lines with hair growing and <laughs> look like bushes. <laughs> you can't tell whether the, they are lines or what. Uh, uh. And then I was there praying. And, and uh, at one point, I brought central police to a standstill because I was so loud and nobody could understand what I was saying. So the OCS sent, <laughs> sent some of the... Uh, policemen to come talk to me, but mm. I couldn't hear anything. In fact, I was ready to die, and nobody knew what I was planning. So um, he realized that nobody is, is able to tone me down. So he came mm. and held my hand mm. and took me to his office. And before he came, in my prayers, when I was very deep in, in prayer, ready to meet my God, I heard a voice tell me, do not worry, I'm going to take you out of this place. But I thought I was talking to myself, but I heard that audible voice speaking to me. And I wondered, what is this about? And so when I was called and he asked me to tell, just tell me what happened, I explained. And then he said, that doesn't make sense. I know your, your, your songs. I know your music. Why would you go pirating secular music and what for? Where are you going to take them? Mm. So it didn't make sense. So he told me, just go back uh, to the cell and please don't pray the way you are praying so <laughs> loud because we are unable to even to, to do our job. We are unable to concentrate. <laughs> So I went back there and then after uh, a few, like two hours, he called me again. He sent somebody, they called me again and I went up there and he told me, you know what, I don't think you have a case to answer. I'm going to give you a free board worth 10,000. I still have my board, mm. but it's back in USA. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to give you a free board worth 10,000. Come on Monday and report. 
So I came back on Monday and then he chased me away. He mm. told me, you know what? I don't see any case here. Just go and never come back here because mm. of this case. Yes. Uh, if you need help, come back, I'll help yes. you. So that's the way mm -hmm. it ended. And then I called my parents. We went to Mr. Kamaru and I said, as long as you don't trust me, I don't think I'm worthy working for you. Yes. So I quit my job. Mm. And that's where I really suffered. I stayed for one year and three months in Nairobi. No job. I have rent to pay. I need to eat. And I am living with four more people who are jobless like me at least I, w I was better i could be uh, invited mm. and when i got to maybe i sing people would buy my music yes. but now again the producer here who i recorded with took all my rights so i had to go buy my own cassettes for 110 shillings and everybody who sold their music, they used to sell it a hundred shillings. So I try to, exp to explain to people, it is not mine. And then they say, no, it has your name. That's your voice. That's your photo there. What do you mean that it's not your music? music. I said, I did it at a producer. Nobody is really getting it. So he took all the rights. And when I tried, you know, to negotiate with him, uh, it became so bad. It became so chaotic. One time we met in a restaurant. He lifted a chair like he wanted to beat me with that chair, to hit me with a chair. The next minute I was summoned by a lawyer. And then I got another producer who wanted uh, to help me, you know, record. He came and stopped the production because the, uh, the agreement that he made me sign stated that I cannot record with another producer the next two albums. So all your three albums he had to record. Yes. And the guy quit his job. He was a high school teacher. He quit his job. I saw him buy a shop. I saw him buy a nice pickup, a new one. And he was making, you know, good money from selling our music. But here I am. I don't have anything to eat. So after I, st I stayed... Uh, without a job for one year and three months. It came to a point I tried looking for jobs. Some of the friends with Mr. Kamaru, I remember I went to one, to one lady who kicked me out like a dog and was yelling at me, get out of my shop. You are a thief. You, want, you, you, you stole from Mr. Kamaru. Now you want to come to steal from me because that was the word that I stole, mm. but I did not steal anything. And you know what God is faithful exactly after one year and three months, the same day, the following year. Those guys, I don't know what happened, but they came and started fighting in front of Mr. Kamaru. And that's when they, they said everything. Oh, you are the one that told me to frame her. Oh. She was thrown in cell for nothing. It is you who was behind. They were fighting. Mm. So I was called by the accountant and he told me, you know what? I have believed that you serve the true God because now we know who did it. And so the girl was fired by the family because the family wasn't mm. happy. But again, I did not want to go back there. But the lady who kicked me out like a dog, she called me and gave me a job and opened a new shop for me in stage market. So I was now running that, that mm. shop. Mm. I worked for her. And then I moved to uh, it's, uh, Nyamakema. Mm -hmm. It's called Nyamakema. Mm -hmm. So I moved there. She had another shop. After some time, she sold the shop. And I was bought as Goodwill. <laughs> 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 so together with the shop, I was bought by the one who bought the shop. Uh. And I worked for that man for nine years until I left for America. Wow. And to go back a little bit, uh, when I was growing up, when I was in primary school, I used to suffer from, I don't know, they used to say it was cerebral mm -hmm. malaria and mm -hmm. I would go crazy mm -hmm. and, and some people would make fun of it and would say a lot of stuff about it. And at one point when I was really, really sick, because I kept on getting admitted in Kijabi hospital and then going back home for some few days and mm. then I get sick. Mm. So after that, uh, the neighbors came to pray for me, yeah. my mom's friends, because they thought maybe I'll meet my God. <laughs> they didn't see me recovering. Mm. 
But after that, that's when I give my life to God. And I tell you what, Lynn, God healed me instantly. It was all gone. And then that is when God gave me a promise that I'll preach in America. Yes. But I thought I would just be going there mm. and singing like other, you know, gospel ministers and coming back. Mm. I didn't see myself being a citizen there. I didn't see myself settling there. But anyway, God is faithful. He promised me when I was 15 years and I went there when I was 38 years. So I waited, I waited for a whole 23 years, but it came to pass. Now I'm a citizen of America. <laughs> Beautiful. Yeah, and I thank God. Yes. And from now, going through those charities, mm -hmm. that's when I admired now the nurses there, the way they were taking care of us. And I, I developed that passion of being a nurse. But again, after high school, I wasn't able to get to college because when I was in... Uh, uh, Form 2, the shop that my dad used to, now he retired, yes. he used to be foreman with Kenya Railway, mm. so he used to make very good money. I grew up and I had a very good life. I wasn't lacking anything. But now he, after he retired, when I was in Form 2, the shop that he had was invaded and everything was stolen. Mm. So he became so grounded. So from there, it was a struggle even to get the school fees. So I was in and out of school, on and off, mm. in and out of school. Mm. So I wasn't able to go back to school or yeah. to go to college. Mm -hmm. So that is now why I started from now uh, working in a small restaurant, yes. working as a house help because I felt like I don't belong to the village. And I used to tell my mom, mom, you know what? I cannot get married here. There is no way I'm going to grow up with this, these problems. We don't have water. I had to get up at, at 3 a.m., go to the, where we used to, to queue for water. It was only one source. And stay the whole day. And then I'll get some water at night, at midnight, such that we would even trade. Uh, 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 my sister would come and take over, continue with the line mm -hmm. until you get to get your, to feed your cans with water. I, if I tell you that we used to wash our legs with just one jug of water, the whole family, you start with the youngest. By the time we get to my mom, it looks like... <laughs> like uh, hot chocolate. Like hot <laughs> chocolate. <laughs> It's a that's the way it, yeah, that's the way it looked because because uh, you know the way mothers yes, are. So she would <laughs> she would clean her legs with all our dirt. Mm. And you know, mm. kids are kids. I used to take a shower once per week, <laughs> once per week, only on Sunday. On, eh, not Saturday. No, okay. only on Sunday. Yes. There is no any other time that yeah. we would take a shower. Yeah. yeah. You see, Gen Z's, Dama doesn't know these oh, things does. exist. No, <laughs> she doesn't know there are times people used to shower on Saturdays. Oh. <laughs> Before, so I that mean, you can get up early and go to church. On Sunday, you yeah. pack a mafuta, <laughs> migu, and you? Yes. Are miss, and are then you go yes. to church. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's, so mm. that's when my desire to be a nurse yes. uh, was... Uh, uh, but well, mm -hmm. came in me because I loved the way you know the way they dress real good, yeah. and then uh, some of them are so nice. I I said oh I wanted to be a teacher. Then I changed. I said I wanna be a news anchor. And at one point, I was uh, presenting a program in Kameme FM Kayokamuige. Yes. But then again, I was only coming for one hour mm. between between 1 p.m. to mm -hmm. 8, just mm -hmm. one hour. Mm. But then it became an issue because it was so famous and people loved it. So the main anchors, again, now they teamed up and they said, no, she can be famous more than the main anchors. How comes everybody is asking for mm -hmm. her? It became a tug of war. Mm -hmm. And uh, I don't want to talk so okay. much about it, but that's how it was done. Yeah. So, uh, so after that, uh, in 2008, I'm just walking in town doing my job. And then I see somewhere they say they apply for green cards. 
and I step in and ask them, uh, how much do you charge? And they tell me how much they charge. I said, okay, and what do you need? We need your, your passport photo, your address, mm. your date of birth. So I gave them. So they get uh, on the internet and they're like, oh, they are not open, but they're gonna be open in September. So I left everything and I paid. I said, okay, when they open, make sure you do it for me yes. the first day. Yes. And guess what? They did it. I forgot about it. But again, after several, like three months, I came back on December and I said, did you apply for me? Mm. He said, yes, we did. And here is your submission form. So I took my form, went home and forgot about it. The following year in May, here comes a letter. You've won green card. <laughs> and I tell you, I used to work in industrial area and I would walk all the way from Bahati. I used to live in Bahati, you know Bahati? Yes, I know. And I would come through uh, Jogo Road, Makongeni there. I would <laughs> use that shortcut and go to industrial area. That's where I used to work. That was my route every day because now the fare was so, you know, yes. was so high I couldn't afford. So I used to walk and I made a lot of friends who who knew me just because they see me going to work so oh, yeah when, when i want when i want when i want a mm. green card mm -hmm. oh my goodness i really thanked god yeah and i and i every time that i was going to work in industrial area i used to go there praying every morning and i would pray and tell god god if you make a way for me if you bless wow. me I was just telling God, I'll be grateful and I'll share whatever God you bless me with. I'll be faithful. And I'll, I would cry on my way going to work. I would cry. When I see somebody coming, I wipe my tears and act like, you know, I wasn't crying. Mm. But I was doing prayer walking all mm. the time. Mm. So when the, the invitation came, I needed like more than 200000 to facilitate everything. The visa the ticket, ticket, the medical checkup, everything. And I did not have the money. But again, because when God makes a way for you, he yes. knows how to maneuver his way. So there my boss uh, and there I salute him. Yes. Uh, his name is David Jonjo mm -hmm. and the wife is Susan Jonjo. I used to call her Mama Haro. She was like a mother to me. So when I when I won green card and I had already worked for them for nine years and I told them it's time to go, she didn't want me to go. She literally cried, telling me, please don't go. And I said, you know what? It's God's promise. And since he brought it to pass, I need to follow what mm. God promised me 23 years back. So I said, I'll go. I love you so much and I enjoy working for you. You've treated me like your own, but I have to follow my dream. So uh, Mr. Jojo gave me $50,000 check. Yeah. $50,000? Uh, oh, sorry. No, oh, sorry. my goodness. <laughs> I'm in America. <laughs> We landed. Yeah, it's I'm Kenya so, shillings. You oh, know? yeah. Sorry. I'm in America. It was 50,000 Kenya shillings. Wow. He signed Which it year for was me. That? that was in 2009. Wow. He gave me, that was a lot of money. Yes. Yeah, 50,000. And then I was saving with NSSF. I showed them that I'm going to America. So they gave me my money. Yes. So it was 20 something mm -hmm. thousand. Mm -hmm. I can't really remember so yeah. well. So and now we have around 70. Yeah. And then uh, music copyright yes. was music copyright. No way. Okay. Yeah. You tell me you got money from music oh, copyright. Oh yeah, they gave me 20,000 Kenya shillings. Oh my God, what happened? I don't know what now happened. Now they give people 2,000 pounds. Oh, everything. But again, we didn't have a lot of musicians like also. we used to. Uh -huh. We used to. And I don't know what's going on there. There's a lot of stuff going on they there. They gotta work on that because oh, yeah. their complaints come in every it's, other time. It's too it's much. Not cute. Oh yeah. They mm -hmm. gave me to uh, uh, even in advance. They told me we're gonna ev give you even in advance. Hey. They gave me twenty thousand, and wow. then I did a fundraiser. I used to, to fellowship in Christian Foundation fellowship. Yes. Uh, my bishop was uh, uh, Harrison K. Nganga. Yes. He's been a father to me yeah. and I was there for like 10 years. So I did a fundraiser mm -hmm. there and this was funny because 
<laughs> whoever was supposed to be the MC mm. did not come, show up. did not show up. Mm. And whoever was supposed to uh, now haul the food from my house to church did not show up. So guess what I used to take the food to church? Mkokoteni. <laughs> what? Has. <laughs> Eh, eh. What? Uh -huh. Has. <laughs> ya kubeba nini? Eh. Muga nini? <laughs> Ulitu hapi yogari? <laughs> yes, Sara. Yes, Sara. I don't joke with the two people. Asara and an Esther. I don't joke. Wait, what? So, where did you get the... So, it happened. <laughs> One of my sisters, may she continue resting in peace. The husband was working for her company. And then nobody is coming to haul food from... I lived in Bahati. So from Bahati to Bunyara Road. And you had cooked. We had cooked. So he, he, he is so funny. He said, sister, now what do we do? Sister, you know what? As long as, it gets there, as long as it gets there. You know what he told me? This, this. By the way, these vehicles are very clean. Yes, they are. They, they are very clean. True, they are. It's not like they are smelly and they got anything. Mm -hmm. And some, some of the people saw it. They say, and they say, <laughs> <laughs> they say, guys, here I want to have a Meaning the food has been brought yes. with a, <laughs> with a funeral, a, a, a funeral vehicle. Mm -hmm. Anyway. But anyway, they ate everything, not that. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing was left. <laughs> and I got 80,000 Kenya shillings. <laughs> <laughs> they ate everything. <laughs> they ate everything. <laughs> nobody, nobody wanted to know whether it was brought by. But, but, but somebody spoke very negative about it. Yeah. And I had, but I said to myself, who cares? Not today, not yeah, today. I said, who cares? It's my day. And uh, you know what? Yes. I'm going to America. And then because I, <laughs> I had preached in so many churches, yes. those pastors were sending me money. When, wow. Like they were like, wow. you're going to America? You know, there are those people that you look at them and you think they just belong to the village yes. or just walking. Yes. You know, oh my goodness, they, they couldn't believe it. And then a good thing with me, I wasn't like charging pastors a lot of money like uh, because my songs were famous. I wasn't going there like saying, oh, this is the amount that I get paid, blah, 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 blah. Some pastors, I just went there and didn't charge anything. Yes. So when they heard that, um, that God has opened a door for me, and you know, when God commands a blessing, nobody can stop it. So I got the money and I was able to cater for everything yes. and even to be conned because somebody conned me 20,000. Um, yeah, I, I helped him because he was doing some business. He returned the money the first time I gave him. He returned. Yeah, the second time. Quisha. So again, the day that I'm supposed to travel, I still owe the company. That, that I bought the ticket with 20,000 Kenya shillings. I went back to my boss, Susan, the wife to Mr. Jonjo. Yes. She gave me 10,000. And then another lady that we used to stay together in Bahati, her name is Celestine Kimani. She went to her ATM and removed everything and gave me the money. Wow. That's how I was able to wow. pay for everything. And... Uh, and now let's come um let's go back a little bit oh, let's go back so uh, you told me that i'm so beautiful yeah. <laughs> and again i i sing good and i thank god it's all to the glory of god and so when you are standing there so many people see you and they 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 see the gift they want to marry you for the gift i want to marry this famous musician you know but don't marry the gift marry the person I have come across several people asking me uh, out for marriage, but I'm going to talk about just two. One was a pastor, and uh, that pastor, after he asked me for marriage, we did all what we were supposed to do. Here in Kenya. Here in Kenya. Mm -hmm. we, uh, 
she's, uh, he said that God spoke to him that I am his wife. Okay? And when you hear God is speaking, hallelujah, you are like, oh yes. You listen. This is heaven bound miracle. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yes. Where? Yes. Where? Yes. <laughs> God has spoken. God has spoken. And Lynn, if somebody wants to marry you, even if God speaks, they have to do their part as a man. Yes. You are not getting married in heaven. It's in this life. So I know God can direct you, yes. but you have to be a man, you have to be a woman. You have to pray your cards well and act like a man, act like a woman. Don't yeah. act like you are spirit. No, we are not. Anyway, hmm. we went and uh, visited my parents. Hmm. We went and visited his parents. Hmm. <laughs> and and uh, we had already seen my archbishop. Yes. And then we were sent to the church board. We went and got tested for HIV. Everything was good. Right when we are starting the committee, he decides to back up. And the way he's backing up, it back, was back down. Oh, yes. Oh, oh, we say you back up. Oh, oh, oh yeah. Oh, yeah. He decided hey. to to leave me. Oh, mm -hmm. oh, he. Oh, really? Yes. He decided to leave me. And now the way he left me, okay, you can leave me. That's fine. But don't. You don't have to hurt me if you don't. If you feel like. We are not going anywhere. Just tell me, you know what? We are not going anywhere. Let's, let's, let's call it quit. Let's behave like humans and adults. But th that's not the way he acted. That man used to insult me so much. Like one time we met and all he did was insult me for a whole hour. A whole hour of insults. Because he was given this advice, if you want a girl to leave you, Insult them. Tell them words that will hurt them. And that's what he did. It, came, it went too far. And then uh, people are asking me, even back in the village, oh, you brought somebody, what happened? When you go to church, this guy is talking behind my back that, uh, that he cannot marry somebody who is ugly like me. That's what the words that he used to say. And then he wasn't working. So he would uh, ask me to, you know, to give him money for food. I would buy money for food. I would give him bus fare. But then he would go bragging that, oh, Sarah loves me so much. In fact, she bribes me with money to marry her. But I can't marry such an ugly person like her. So that after some time and after all these insults, I, 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 uh, and then I lost a close friend of mine. We went to see the friend in Kenyatta. Yes. On our way back, imagine you have lost your, fa your best friend. And then this man cannot even slow down and say, okay, you've got an enough for today. Or already I came crying from Kenyatta all the way to the town. But when we got to Kwaja Mosque there, again he started. Oh, you blocked your heart for me uh, uh, and you don't handle this blessing the way you are supposed to handle it. If you don't handle this blessing the way you are supposed to handle it, I'm going to leave you. You are not the first one that I've asked for a hand in marriage. I've had so many and because they didn't handle the blessing the right way, I left them. It was like threat and I couldn't believe it. Already I'm mourning my friend and here you are. So he thought he was a blessing. Oh, yeah. Boy, bye. And uh, 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 after all that, he remembered that he didn't have any bus. <laughs> <laughs> so, I'm sorry. <laughs> so again, he says, he says, I didn't have fear. And guess what? I gave him fear. Yeah. Wow, sir. Yeah, I got back in my pocket and gave him fare. He used to live in uh, Banana, a place called Moshada. Yes. So I gave him a hundred shillings. And by then, we are talking about almost 20 years back. That was uh, a lot of Forever money. Ago. Yeah, it was like 30 shillings going mm. there. So mm. there was some extra. 
So he told me from now, I'm not going to talk to you. Uh, uh, I'm going to seek God, to seek God again. Who with, spoke to you? With your faith in his hands. Yeah. Hey. But, but, yeah. But again, the God who spoke to you that, uh, that I'm your wife, you are going again to consult him. Yes. And you come back when he talks to you. Hey. That, is, that is not God. Discover a homely haven at Ocean View Ridge in Vipingo by Optivan. Visualize your dream coastal home. Call us today on 0790-300-300. So with all this stuff going on, I sank into depression. And then uh, uh, Archbishop was waiting for, where, how marriage. far are you? With the marriage. Yeah, how far are you? We are ready for this. Yes. And then he was told, oh, you know what? This man is saying, bra, 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 bra. And, and, and then somebody noticed that I wasn't doing right because I sank into depression. Yes. Whenever I sat next to a man in church, I would move away from that devil mm -hmm. because uh, that depression told me that every man is a devil. So I didn't want to sit next to a demon. So every time I saw a man next to me, I would move. <laughs> I didn't want to sit next to a man. Yes. It was so bad. So after all that, then he called us and we went there and talked. And I won't go into details, yes. but at the end of everything, he was the one who was on the wrong. So he said, oh, I see my mistake and I'm going to come back. I'm going to come back. Uh, I have noticed that I've done wrong. Mm. So I waited for a whole six months. He didn't come back. And I was there. I got into depression. I was fainting. I was unkept. You know, I wasn't eating. I wasn't sleeping. Mm. And my brothers became so annoyed. They wanted to go teach him a lesson. Yeah. But I said, no, don't teach the man of they God. Want, don't teach the man of God. They wanted to pull up a lesson. You should have let yeah, them pull up. Yeah, he's, he's a man around. of God. Should, you know, oh, he's a man of God. Oh, yeah. Don't pull up on the man of God. <laughs> Oh, yeah. So I told them no. So I stopped them. So he didn't come back. Yes. Uh, uh, so one time as I was sitting mm. down uh, there at Nyamakema outside the shop, there were some stairs there and I'm sitting there and I'm crying literally. But I don't know that that, you know, tears are flowing down my cheeks because when you are in depression, you just cry anyhow so i was there crying and here comes a madman he's you know his face looks like 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 smeared with i don't know it was so black you couldn't tell the color of his clothes the shoes were different one was i mean they are not the same kind mm. of shoes mm. and he looked at me and 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 said the way I don't know what he had taken. He looked at me and said, you know, the way they talk when they mm. have mm. smoked glue yes. with a with a funny voice. Yeah. And he told me, My sister, or well, mother, what are you doing there crying? When things are so hard, when you got heavy burdens, you give them to God. You don't carry your burdens. You cannot be able to carry them. You need to give them to God. He is wow. able to carry them for you. Wow. He said it in a funny way. But you, you know, yeah. But I said to myself, I looked at myself and I said, come on, Sarah, wake up. A madman knows how to give all the burdens to God. You are here. You are a famous gospel minister. You have preached to so many people, so many churches, so many places. I think I've gone all around. Yes. Him. And yet you still don't know how to give your burdens to God. And then God gave me a scripture about that madman who was cutting himself. He used to live in the tubes. But when with one encounter with Jesus, he was healed mm. instantly. Mm. So that voice was speaking to me, like giving me therapy. Yes. I can do it instantly. Yeah. When I come to resurrect, when I came, when I, when I found that ninth boy, I was able to resurrect. You know, I mean, God was asking me, what is so hard for me? You know what? I took my notebook and I wrote down and I said, Sita dear Atena, no more crying. And you know what? I did not go for therapy. I did not take any antidepressants. I did not go for any counseling. Boom, it was gone. That's how I was healed. 
And then after now I'm good yes. and I'm healed. Then this man comes after I waited and now he's not coming. I mean, church, we, we had overnight prayers. I am deep in the spirit, sleeping on the floor, crying to God. And I, in fact, I was fasting a whole week there. And somebody comes and touches me. Hey, somebody is calling. I'm like, now who is this? Who is this removing me from the presence of God? I don't want to get out of the presence. And then he insisted. So I looked and he said, somebody is calling you. He didn't tell me who that somebody was. When I went to see the somebody, it was that pastor. Now he's asking for forgiveness. I looked at him, I said, no, I'm not forgiving you. I said, I'm not forgiving you. I said, no, I won't. He begged me. That man, he knew how to talk with a tone. Oh my goodness, oh my God, please forgive me if you know what I've gone through. <laughs> Then I, I, I said to myself, what, what am I preaching and I'm not forgiving? Mm -hmm. I said, I've forgiven you, but I'm not going back with you. He said, if God tells me to come back, I'll come back. I said, oh, there's no place for you. Mm. <laughs> 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 I'm done. Yes. So Hey, the man he, oh, was a pastor. Oh, yeah. He yes. sent another pastor to talk to me. And I looked at that pastor, I, he, I respected him and yes. he knew. Yes. I told him, you know what? You, he told me, if God has started anything, anything started by God doesn't come to an end. It has to go through. And I looked at him, I said, you know what? In my case, God is gonna now cancel everything that he started in my case. If things go through, but in my case, God is have God is gonna have to give me a backup. Yes. He's gonna have now to be on my side. And if you hear that I'm going back to that man, just know that I've gone out of my mind. Please take me to Madari Hospital. Because I won't do that if I am normal. Just know that I'm crazy, mm -hmm. I'm out of my mind. Please go get some help and take me to Madari Hospital as soon as you can. That pastor looked at me and the way I respected him, he couldn't believe it. Like he guessed at me. And me, when I make a decision, I don't go back. Done. No, I don't go back. Yes. And I'm glad I did that. Mm. So that was a done case. After that, he got one of my friends and they did a wedding. Lynn, I went there and I sang two songs and I gave my <laughs> gift. <laughs> You should have seen me dancing wait, there. Wait, 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 what? Yes, I went there and I sang two songs and I gave them a gift. So God talked to him. God talked to him and showed him a different Yeah, place. now God changed. Uh, so he got another one. Yes, anyway, your friend. My friend. Shay. Oh, yeah. That lady was my friend. So that <laughs> and was done. two songs. <laughs> and now, he, oh, yeah, I'm yes. now going to America. Yeah. And then I get another one. We do the, the same, same process. And Archbishop uh, and the pastoral, pastoral team say, because you are going to America, we are, we, we are going to do everything f very fast. Because if you want to get married before you leave for America, we, we are not going to, you know, we know you are stunned. So we are going to stand with you. And everything was, was done the right way. And again, they came home, two Nissans, and we went to the family, and a lot of stuff went by. But, and then he said, now, you know what? We don't have the money. And I said, we don't need a ceremony. We just need to get married. Yes. You don't have to, to cook a lot of food. Mm. You don't need to bring, you know, a lot of gymnastics there <laughs> and making people see, oh, you did the, yes. the, the, the best wedding. Yeah. That's a ceremony. But the way you, you live after that, that's the, the wedding now, yes. the marriage. Yes. It's not about big ceremony. And I said, we can even be prayed for. But he said, oh, what? He, he gave some excuses. And well, I said, I have to go. I'm not canceling my trip. I'm going. 
So the family came, they saw me off. They came to my fundraiser and supported me. Wow. Oh, they loved me. Wow. Oh, they loved me. They supported me yeah. so much. And they even, uh, uh, some of them took me to the airport. Mm. And the guy came back crying all alone. He was crying. They were trying to comfort him. They really comforted him. That man was, <laughs> but I tell you what, <laughs> after all that crying, after some few months, I was again jilted on the phone. That one now <laughs> set me free over the phone. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. So, <laughs> and then uh, I am, uh, yeah, he set me free over the phone. Uh, oh, if somebody doesn't like you anymore, why do you, why do you want to force yourself to them? And I say to myself, does he know that, that uh, here, I'm um, hot cake, does he? <laughs> I cried for three <laughs> days and I said, you know what, go to where, wherever you want to go. Mm. So I talked to my dad and I said, hey, dad, <laughs> I'm too poor. And I said, dad, I'm too poor. And I said, I don't want them to say that we took their money. Just get some waze and go with them there. Yes. Return whatever they brought mm. home. So they returned everything. And it was on January, that's when we broke up. Mm. But they went uh, in April. He was already married. You tell me where he got a wife in three months, did all the negotiations and everything, and they did a wedding, and mine didn't go through. Hey. But whoever connected them, they really supported them with everything they needed, yes. and they were telling him, they were telling him they, and he told me that they, they are calling him and they are pinning him. What is he doing without getting married when people go to America, they don't come back? There was some interference mm. but he listened to them and there i am trying to look for ways for him to come uh, even through school so that when we get there we can get married i was trying to see if he can come and i would send him money R little did i know that he was using the same money to go now pay oh, dowry wow. on oh, the other Sarah. edge <laughs> hey. and if me i'm just hitting doubles there <laughs> and <I'm> just <laughs> And he's using the money to go now <laughs> marry another <laughs> another woman. Imagine. <laughs> but guess what? You know what? God is faithful. Yes. When he he left me, uh, I I had I was I was at home. I had already gotten into an accident, and I wasn't going to work. So now this is double tragedy. I've been jilted, and I'm nursing my woods in the U.S. Right? Yeah, in the U.S. now, and I like eight months before. When I went to church, there was a white man who used to come visit our yes. church. And he did not even recognize me for some reason. He used to come, but did recognize me. But that day, I don't know, we had kind of revival. And I had my African attire, all Maasai, you know, outfit, yes. everything with, with all those ornaments. I have everything. So that day, I wore different. So... I am right behind him and then he turns back and sees me and the guy looks at me and he goes like I was like why is this man gazing with his mouth open he said oh my god I've never seen such a beautiful woman like you <laughs> and I said to myself beautiful and you know what I was told there he looked at me that man was crazy. He went crazy. Are you married? How old are you? I said, I'm almost turning, uh, I'm, I'm 38, I'm on my way to 39. He said, no, no, you're not. You look like 25. I said, no, I am almost 39. The man gave me his phone number and asked me for my phone number. And then he asked me, are you married? I said, no, I'm not. But remember, I was engaged to this other yes. one. But you are not married. You are just engaged. So after he kept talking to me, I said, you know what? I left my fiancé in Kenya, and I'm looking for ways to bring him over. And he told me, what if God brought you to America to give you an, uh, somebody else? And here you are denying your mm. blessing. Mm. And I said, no, the way I've been hurt by so many. I don't want to hurt him by leaving him. 
So he, his heart, I mean, he felt heartbroken because he was determined to marry me. Yes. So now I get into an accident and here I'm jilted and I don't know where to buy some spare parts. So I remember, oh, this Muzungu gave me a number. I still have it even today. It's in my purse. <laughs> I've never thrown it away. Yes. So I got there and I got the number. I said, hey, this is so and so. Can you advise me on where to get these spare parts? Bra, 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 bra. And then he asked me, uh, how is it going with your fiancé? I said, oh, I don't know what to say. He said, he said what? He said, you know what? It didn't work. He said, oh, it didn't work. He acted like, oh, he's so sympathizing. Oh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> he's like, yes, yes. <laughs> he's, 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 he told me, when you told me, I started doing happy dance. <laughs> Later I knew, on. yes, yes, now the door is open, yes. there is nobody blocking. Mm, mm. So when I said that, ooh, the man went crazy. Phone calls. And he said, uh, before you fix your car, I'll be dropping you to work and I'll be getting you from work. And then he would come, yes. open the door and, so, and <laughs> say, babe, baby doll. Get, a, get in. He calls me baby doll even today. Oh, babe, get, uh, he would make sure that I'm in the car, buckle me up, shut the door and then go on the other side. That's clear. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and that'll drive me. Yes. And I'll tell him, no, I have some neighbors. He would tell me, no, no, that's my responsibility. And I, I tell him, please don't come. Mm -hmm. The next minute when I am working, I t I'm told that, oh, somebody is calling you in the break room. I go there. He's there with food, with balloons, with flowers. And I'm like, Oh, and then I sit down there, he's talking to me and feeding me. And the Kenyans are passing there, they, f they see a Mzungu feed me and they're like, oh, look at us one. Where does he have a brother? <laughs> <laughs> so, I, yeah, I said to myself, oh, there, that's why insulting me. And he's calling, uh, uh, that was the first time I heard somebody call a woman babe and feed them and everything. I said to myself, I would be so stupid to turn this one down. He loves God. He loves me. What else do I need? I don't want those, oh, God said, oh, God spoke to me. And then the other day, oh, God refused. I, 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 said, I don't want that nonsense. I said, and I said to myself, I'll never marry anyone who doesn't prove to me that they love me. Because even the Bible says, husbands, love your wives. If a man is. is marrying you because God said, and the man doesn't mar marry, or doesn't marry you because he loves you, he doesn't love you, he's marrying you because God said, please run for your dear life. Because the same thing that God said, you'll be thrown out of the house with the same words, God said, I kick you mm. out. So people are using the name of God to manipulate their way out. Situations, yes. Yeah, so after that, we didn't even go for long. <laughs> Can I tell you that we dated, I think, for, I think maybe two months. Yes. And we got married. Baby girl. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we got married. <laughs> and we've been together for the last 12 years. Oh. And he's still the same. I'm still baby doll. He still feeds me. He cooks for me. Uh, okay, I don't want people to have this impression like I just sit there and, and take advantage <laughs> of the boy child. <laughs> <laughs> That's not the way it is. Mm -hmm. But he hasn't stopped what he did from the beginning. So it, he wasn't doing it he wasn't just acting. to get me. No, he wasn't mm, acting. That's who he is. Yeah, and we did a very good church wedding. Oh. And I'm happy to married ever after. <laughs> oh, Sarah. Yes. How is it? Oh, it's good. It's good. Yeah. It, really, let me tell you. When I work at Dabo and I find him <laughs> home and he's asking me, baby doll, are you hungry? And he goes to the kitchen and makes fresh food. It's not like we don't have food in the fridge. As you sit there, I'll surprise you. He makes the best 
food. Oh. So he cooks the best food and he's like, oh, just sit there and you feed me after that. I know you are tired of working. So let me okay, have the feet. Oh yeah, oh, absolutely. Man. Oh yeah, he does it oh. all the time. Yes. I'm, I'm, I'm spoiled. As you should be. <laughs> I'm spoiled. As you should be. And I tell you what, it's addictive. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, love should be that way. Oh yeah. Don't stop what you did for me when we met. And he does it willingly. Yes. Yeah. He <laughs> does it willingly, mm. and I have enjoyed it for twelve good years. For twelve good years. And here I am. I went back to school after that. And I graduated with nursing. Uh, I've been a nurse for the last almost nine years now. Wow. Yeah, I graduated in 2015. Yes. And I'm still going to school. So I'll go to the next level. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yes. from house help, mm. you don't have to, to sit there. What I normally say, if God gives you a chance, make use of it and do your part. And then God says you bless the work of your hands. Now, those who despised me and saw me as nothing uh, after working hard and going to school, now I have achieved my dream career. And I thank God. Mm. And at the same time, I'm a pastor. So, yes. yeah, so uh, we serve with Reverend Ivan. I always mention him. His name is Reverend Ivan Gogi. Mm. And uh, the church is called Fountain of Worship yeah. in St. Louis. Wow. So all things that God said, they have come to pass. Yeah. Beautifully. Beautiful. And I thank God. And I thank God for founding of worship family. It's not a big church, but we have a lot of love there. And we preach the gospel as it is. We don't manipulate anyone. And we have good members. We thank God. And I don't manipulate them. Yes. I'm not going to act like that, Pastor. Mm, you, you, are, you are so called. You don't want to work. But you're asking money from somebody. You say that she's, she's, she's no good looking. Why are you taking my money then? Why? You know, don't manipulate people in the name mm. of God. I don't know whether he's still full time like he used to say. But I don't see him anywhere preaching. I've not, I go online and I check. I don't see him anywhere. Mm. So I don't know whether he's still a pastor or not. But please don't use the name of God yeah. to manipulate people and to become a burden to people. Lean, if God calls me full time, he's going to provide. I shouldn't be nagging you all the time. I'm time. always there hanging around Gosh, and say, yeah, and, and ask, you know, and even giving prophecy, you know, to manipulate you to give. No, let's stop that gymnastic in the church of God. If I am not saying that I don't have people who bless me. I have people who bless me and I also bless people, but I don't manipulate anybody. Yes. If anybody wants to bless me, that's their own good. But I work. I also support the church. We have bills to pay. We have a mortgage to pay. We have electricity. So if I sit there and I'm expecting the members to do everything, what am I doing? Nothing. So what is God going to bless? Because blessed is the heart yeah, that gives and the heart that... So so then I'm not going to get mm. any blessing. Yes. Yeah. I'm not against those people who are called full time. But it doesn't mean that you shouldn't work. Mm. But if God has called you full time, he will provide. He will provide. He's not going to make you a burden to people. He's not going to make you a con woman or a con man. He's going to provide. Beautiful. Yeah, you're not going to manipulate yes. anybody. Yeah. I love that. Yeah, just I, the way it's supposed to be. Uh, the way it's supposed to be. Mm -hmm. I love that. Yes. If God calls you full time, mm -hmm. he's going to provide for you. Full time. Yes, absolutely. Yes, but mm -hmm. baby girl, how is marriage like? Oh, he's good. Okay. <laughs> Even if, if I went back to being a girl and you line them up here, a thousand of them, I'll still go for Mr. Gregory James Dryden. His name is Greg Dryden. Yes. So, Mr. Greg, I know he's going to understand this because it's in English. Mm. And I'll say again that I'll still go back with uh, to him. Yes. It doesn't mean that Everything flows smoothly all the time. No. no, no, that is a lie. Don't let anyone fool you. There are some times we don't agree because of our cultural backgrounds, because of even your perspective, you know, the way you see things. But we don't fight. We live peace free. Mm -hmm. And then sometimes you have to give and take. This side you have to give, the other side you have to take. He does the same. But I, all I can say that I'm happily married. Beautiful. And I thank God. And in 2017, he came. So my parents, 
uh, we visited my grandma and we had a good time. And he enjoyed being here in Kenya. Yeah. Yeah. And you are happy. I'm happy. I love this for you. Oh yeah. Oh my God, I've never, I've never been so happy for someone. <laughs> I, I love, love this for you. Oh yeah. You know. Yes. And you are, you know, you are working in a job that you love. Oh yeah, I love and my you're still job. Still pushing yourself. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm still pushing myself. Yeah. I have to go to the next level just mm -hmm. because I'm, I'm turning 52 doesn't mean that I'm too old that no, I can't. Not. Yeah, I'll be 52 <laughs> next year in wow. May. Yeah. No, you're not. You are too. Mm -hmm. Yes. And my babies. Oh, Muga, we get it. <laughs> yes. Make sure you bring, a, you send a chicken to Muga as a gift. <laughs> He's also a me baby. <laughs> Oh, wow. <laughs> he just, yes, yes, you know. Mm -hmm. But congratulations. Thank you. And I love, how is your heart? Your heart my, is good? My heart is good and um, peaceful. Uh, I thank God. I don't know. Sometimes, you know what? <laughs> I don't want to cry because I, I, I cry easily. Mm -hmm. When I think of the Father that God has brought me and know that you've done for me, imagining that I'm, preaching to people who got PhDs. It's not like you are preaching to people who who are like <laughs> the people who followed David. Mm -hmm. They were all depressed and everything mm -hmm. when he started. The people that joined him when he was running in the cave, they were desperate people. The members that I have there are not desperate. Some of them make more money than I do. They got higher education than me, but they still listen to me. Isn't that the grace of God? Why? Because God gave a promise and he brought it to pass. But just make sure you had God. Don't be, uh, don't let people lie to you. Make sure you hear it mm, from God. Mm. And when God gives a promise, he brings it to pass. Good. Yes. What do you tell people who are seeking for a chance in love? People who are still waiting for someone to love you, mm -hmm. the, to love them the way Greg loves you. You know what? I would say, number one, if somebody doesn't care about your feelings, whether they hurt you or not, they don't deserve you. Do not just go after somebody because your uh, ears have advanced or you feel like you are desperate. Go after, go after somebody who truly loves you for who you are. And if God has one for you in store, he will come. Lean have been left not more than, not less than six of them. And they all made me cry. Some of them I didn't even care. You can go wherever you want to go. <laughs> I had good, you know, shock absorbers. But one thing I knew, God did not tell me that I won't give you a husband. So I still had hope, but little did I know that the ones that are making me cry are not meant for me. Just let them go. If somebody is hurting you, they are making you cry. They feel like now, Lynn, don't marry somebody who feels like they are doing you a favor. This pastor was acting like, like, oh, he didn't need a wife. I'm the one who was so desperate for a man. Don't marry somebody because they think they are doing you a favor. Marry for love. Yes. Yes. And you know what? Love works for itself. You don't have to force it. Yes. Yeah, somebody who just go crazy and like, I've seen, a, a, you know what, Lynn? There are so many beautiful women out there, mm -hmm. even in the same church. But he, he fell in love with me, not them. You know? Because it was God who ordained it. Yes. And it was a surprise. I didn't go on Facebook or on the dating sites to look for one. He was right there. He was right there. But you know what? Like I sang and said, God can use any way to bless you. Yes. That's what he did. Sing for us. Sir. Oh, sing that's... something. <laughs> sing, sing just what's in your heart. Oh. Just, just sing for sing, not sing for us. Mm -hmm. Sing. Oh yeah. Sing, not for us. Sing. Yes. So, <laughs> I would say uh, one of the tracks that really encouraged me, even today, even today, it's still fresh, and I did it. I think in two thousand, that God can use any means to bring you out or to yes. you know to deliver you from all your predicaments and don't lose heart it goes like this 
がいのあほうでらじらおよでねがだこはとれれれあうえはてかいねどがくえごろかなおろねひにゃあうえてれらもあだにあごてい i えどがてきょねきがいにゃろかもろがいにゃろかもあれがいにゃろかごてい i え God is coming to rescue you. The same way he did for Israelites. He heard their cries and he said, I have seen, I have heard, and I am coming. Yes. You exude very beautiful energy.、Mm-hmm. Like you just have, you are such a vibe. Thank you. You know, and、Thank、you've you. inspired a lot of people. Thank you. you. You are not what they called you. Look、no. at you now. You know,、mm-hmm. look at you.、Mm-hmm. But before I let you go,、mm-hmm. and、uh, I want you to send a message to Greg because I know he will be watching this,、mm-hmm. you know.、Mm-hmm. But before that, is there anything you wanted us to touch on that maybe we've left that you want to talk about? Okay,、uh, this one is, is a request. Yes.、Uh, in 2009, that I was going through a, a lot, but just when I landed in America,、mm-hmm. One of my brothers, he disappeared.、Um, uh, I don't know what was going on. I left, I settled him before I left. He had,、um, we, we took care of it, and he, he had a job. I don't know what happened between him and, and the boss. And the boss was kind of, you know, rough,、uh, harsh with, with him. So. He, she terminated、uh, his job. I think he felt like he came to his end.、Mm-hmm. So, what he did, he called、um, one of my sisters. My, sisters、uh, my sister also arrested in 2015.、Mm-hmm. So, he called and said,、uh, I want to go somewhere where I'll, I'll rest without anybody you know, interfering with me. So, he left the ID, he left the phone, and left.、Uh, The, the house unlocked and the padlock, everything there. So by the time my sister came from, from Kayore to Bahati,、mm. he had already left. So up to now, me and I have cried and cried. I've, I've, I don't know.、Oh. Yeah, that, that really, really,、uh, I don't know. It's not easy. But I said, I, I said, God, I won't complain. Even when I lost the two sisters, he didn't show up. And his name is Peter Gediri. He was the firstborn on the side of the boys. So up to now, we, we don't know wh- where he is. And that really, really affected my mom's health.、Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. But I said to myself, it's not going to keep me from serving God. It, it hurts. Can't. I don't know if somebody maybe h a v e seen him. Do you have a photo? Or, yes,、so、I do. You can put it here? Yes,、All、I right, do. It's showing on your screen, guys.、Mm-hmm. Yeah. I don't know if somebody knows where he is. There was a time I posted it on Facebook, and somebody told me that he, he is somewhere. And、uh, I asked him, How did you know? I talked to him, and he was located through a word of knowledge, which was a line in. Now I'm not that stupid anymore that you can manipulate me in the name of God.、Mm. And I asked that person very personal questions that only. Your sibling can know, nobody else can know. I asked him, and he said, Oh no, he doesn't want to talk. I said, Why doesn't he want to talk? If he doesn't want to talk, I want you to ask him these particular questions, and then you text me the answer. The guy did not. So I knew he was trying、mm. to、e- extort some money from me because I'm in America.、Mm. Mm. So that's the only thing that, that I feel that really, you know,、uh, makes me sad. Other than that, I can't complain about anything else in my life.、Mm-hmm. 
and I have not given up hope. And whatever he is, I don't know whether he is watching me, but whatever he is, I just want to tell him that we are still waiting for him. And we love him. And, uh, and if he comes back, he can tell that God yes. has changed our lives. Mm. He can tell. Mm -hmm. Yeah, God has changed our lives. Mm. So that's one, one of the things that uh, I would like to talk about. And I felt like if, okay. if I would come here and you give me, you know, such a, a big yeah. audience, yeah. you know, it's and okay. such, you know, an honor, I would feel bad to go and not say anything about my brother. Yes. Yeah, so mm -hmm. that's the, the only thing I wanted to mm. talk about. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We're putting the photo on the screen. It's right there with the names. Mm -hmm. And also, guys, if you happen to know him, just let him know. The family is still waiting. Yeah. I believe, I believe something good will come out of this. Mm. I believe. Yeah, and he was, he was uh, such a, a good, a, a good man he was he was wonderful mm -hmm. yeah i don't know what happened and he didn't even wait for my sister and that thing really it really affected my family yeah especially my mom mm -hmm. and the last born sister mm -hmm. now who who passed in 2015 mm -hmm. Even even by the time he went to her grief, he was still sad. He felt like, is there anything I could have done? You know, because they were too close. They mm. were my. He was after my sister. They were too close. He was wondering, what did I do? I, so, hope, I hope he sees this. Yeah. I really hope he sees this. Oh, mm. Sarah, mm. I didn't know that part. Yeah, I did not share it with you. Yeah, but I hope he sees this. And, and I hope I, it's not a bad thing that I talked no, about it's it. It's very much in order. Mm -hmm. And I will even post him past this episode. Mm -hmm. I'll keep posting him on our community pages mm -hmm. so that if anyone locates him, mm -hmm. then they are able to communicate. Yeah. How can people get hold of you in case they know anything? Do you want to give your email? Yes, uh, I would rather give my email. Yes. Uh, my email is... I R A R A mm -hmm. dot S A R A H mm -hmm. at Gmail dot com. Okay. Irara dot Sarah at, at Gmail dot com. Na and then on Facebook I, I go by Sarah Irara Dryden. Okay. My music page is uh Sarah Irara Music. Mm -hmm. And I'm also on Instagram and TikTok, but okay. I don't use Instagram so much in okay. TikTok. So okay. the best way would be email. Facebook uh, and Facebook mm. and my music page. Okay. Yes. Good. Yeah. They will. Thank you. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you even for sharing this last part. Huh? Mm -hmm. It's how you've chosen to continue being grateful and thank God. Oh, oh yeah. Even through this part of the storm. Huh? Yes. And I hope honestly your answers are, mm -hmm. your prayers are mm -hmm. answered. Amen. Right? Mm -hmm. Okay. What do you want to tell Greg? I want to tell Greg. I usually call him Sir Greg mm. uh, and Priest Charming. <laughs> I want to tell Greg, uh, Sir Greg, I thank you for allowing God to use you to change my life. He, you've been so supportive. I've seen you standing with me. Uh, God helped you to wipe away my tears. And here I am testifying of the goodness of the Lord. Yes. And I would say even if I would go back to being a girl, I would still pick you. I won't go for anybody else. I will go for you. You are a wonderful man. Yes. You are a wonderful husband. And you always he, you always bless me, even when I go to work. Mm. Craig is there telling me, baby doll, God bless you. Yes. May God keep you. May God protect, protect you as you drive to work. Mm. I thank God that his, full, his mouth is full of blessings. And he always tell me that, uh, he tells me, you know what, I don't want to take a photo with you. you. You look like a model. I don't look like a model. Mm -hmm. He doesn't really like taking, mm -hmm. he's not, a, he don't like photos yes, so much. Yes. But he, he like taking photos of me oh. and tells me, baby doll, stand there. I'm going to take a picture. Oh. oh, that one is nice. Yes. So he, he's my cameraman when yes. I'm in the house. Beautiful. Yeah, and oh. he's, he's lovely. Mm. He's just lovely. 
happy for and you. And again, even when I'm busy with school, I don't type fast, mm. but I write fast. Mm. He's so good. Mm. So he chips in and helps me type my wow. homework and makes the work easy for me. Such beautiful love. <laughs> oh yeah, he's wonderful. Good. Yeah. I love this for you. Thank I you. I want this for everybody. Yes. I want people to experience this amount of joy that you're experiencing. You know what I mean? Yes. But what do you want to tell Sarah? If you were to speak to yourself, what would you say, dear Sarah? <sighs> now, number one, dear Sarah, you are fear-free and wonder-free made. And God created you with a purpose. Yes. Pursue your destiny. Good. Let nothing stop you. Yes. And also have a heart for people. Have a heart for people. Yeah. Um, never give up. God is faithful. Yes. Pursue your destiny to the end. Nothing is a limit. Just work hard and mm. stay focused. Work hard and yes. stay focused. Yes. And you are fearfully and wonderfully, and wonderfully made. made. Yes. You are gorgeous. Enough, no apologies. If somebody think that, Sarah, you don't look good, have no apologies. You deal with yourself. Yeah. You know what I would say? Who cares? Yes. I, yeah, that's upon you. Yes. If you have to correct what God has created, that's your problem. Yes. I'm comfortable yes. and I'm good. Deal with it. Oh, yes. Who cares? <laughs> yeah, I say it, that yes. all the time. Who cares? Who cares? <laughs> <laughs> and my friend tells, he yeah. tells me, Mom, you know what? You inspire me. And I tell her, you know what? Yes. I say, who cares? And you People are. will talk. Yes. But at the end of the day, they are not helping you with anything. Mm. So I said, you can talk all the negativity that you want. Let me know when you are done. <laughs> but... I will listen to that. Yes. Yeah. And Thank one so one more thing. Yes. Somebody oh. was using my photos and my husband to con people that he's taking them to America for, to give to offer them nanny jobs. Mm. Then we say this clearly. I don't do that. Yes. And that was taken care of. The lady was called Elizabeth Rari, and I had some people insulting me that I'm a con pastor. Mm. I'm not. I work hard. Yes. I have a job. I have a career. Yes. I have a church. I'm serving. Mm. I don't have time to con people. Mm. And, I'm, and I'm not desperate. Yes. So just tell my Kenyan mm. friends and those who don't, who are talking bad about it yeah. and those in Gulf, I felt the pain and I was even crying when some of them lost hundreds of, of thousands. thousands of mm. money and it really grieved my heart. Yeah. So please, Look at me properly. If you see somebody using a photo like mine, you are being conned. Yes. Don't fall for that Don't trap. Fall. Yes. yes. Thank you. Lee. No, Thank you. You've been Thank you so amazing. Much. Thank you. You've been wonderful. Amen. Thank you for blessing us with your story, Amen. with your smile, Thank you. with your beauty, Thank you. with your hair. Wow. Ah, girl, you are a baby doll for a reason. Thank you. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Asante Sarah. Haribu. May God bless you. Amen. Even when you go back home, mm -hmm. Salimia Watuetu, Uko will. in I the will. US. I will. You get what I mean? Mm -hmm. The land of Dallas. Yes. yes. <laughs> Ah, guys, <laughs> ah, what a show, man. The vibe was, ah, yani, no, not was the vibe is vibing. Eh? Sorry, it's just a vibe. Beautiful heart brings so much joy. God, I know, I know. You can imagine I've done four shows today. Wow. And she managed to make sure that we end our day with a smile and blessings. Like, come on, girl. May you all experience this kind of love. May there be so many chances in your life. Don't give up until you fall in the arms of that person that loves you for you. Not for the gift, not for the looks, not for what you can do, but genuinely loves you for you and they care about your feelings. Forgive and forgive, but <laughs> you forget, like in forgive. So I'm gonna Maisha. You are deserving of love and a good person and someone that will take care of your heart. Someone who is going to be gentle with your feelings. You know what I mean? Don't give up. Don't give up. Mr. Greg, you both of you are lucky, actually. Both of you are lucky. And 
you're not lucky you're blessed both of you are blessed you know yeah so thank you so much for watching for being with us this whole year i keep saying it's been an amazing year we are experiencing blessings as a network left right and center hakuna janika hapa niwaambie vitu ziko poa vitu ziko poa we are grateful we are grateful the support is beautiful our partners are doing the thing you guys are coming through i mean i mean god has been gracious and i hope you experience the same blessings in your life and always remember if you can dream it you can achieve it You get what I mean? If you can dream it, you can achieve it. Ask God to bless you. By the way, knock and the door shall be open. Ask and it shall be given unto you. These simple things by the way they work in life. They work, you know. But once again, asante sana for being with us through this year. It's been an amazing year for Elenen. We just turned to the other it's the other day. Yeah, we just turned to and God is doing it. So continue subscribing understand subscribe it is free so if you have watched this show and you've not subscribed please subscribe there there are no charges for subscribing but if you want to support us also we have our pay bill we have our mpesa number you can do your thing there but subscribe please that's the greatest support you can give us as a network and also to our incredible partners at optiven thank you for always coming through they have amazing amazing pieces of land at o and view ridge in vipingo if you're looking for a retirement home come away ni sara na greg and you just want to come and retire and you want to see the view in indian ocean check them out i love those people they are amazing congratulations to mr washuri and the team for your 24 years of excellence and giving people things that they can trust in and of course mugo kopo Atimisi sabe kuku. Sijini msabe hapa. Guys. This season was mugas, you know, muga likula kuku yetu but we are good. We are not complaining. We are not complaining. Thank you to the incredible team at LNN of course and our amazing editors also. We do not take you guys for granted. It's been real. It's been awesome. As we continue to prepare for 2024, do not forget to be grateful for the things that you've experienced this year. A grateful heart goes a long way. But they practice gr gratitude. Thank you. Thank you for life. Thank you for this show. Thank you for our amazing guests. Thank you for the team. Thank you for this place we come and just film our incredible work. Just practice gratitude and you'll see how far you're gonna go. I've loved this day. I've loved ending these shows Zaleo na style. So I'm gonna see you maybe tomorrow or the day after at 10 a.m. Sawa sawa. Bye bye.